Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole Roman cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and began to beat him on the head. After they had mocked him, they took the scarlet robe off him and put his own garments back on him and led him away to crucify him. As they were coming out, they found a man of Cyrene named Simon, whom they pressed into service to bear his cross. And they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. They gave him wine to drink mixed with gall, and after tasting it, he was unwilling to drink. And when they had crucified him, they divided up his garments among themselves by casting lots and sitting down. They began to keep watch over him there. And above his head, they put up the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. At that time, two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those passing by were hurling abuse at him, wagging their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him and saying, he saved others, he can't save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him now come down from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God, let God rescue him now. If he delights in him, for he said, I am the son of God. The robbers who had been crucified with him were also insulting him with the same words. Now from the sixth hour, darkness fell upon all the land until the ninth hour. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of those who were standing there, when they heard it, began saying, this man is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and taking a sponge, he filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave it him to drink. But the rest of them said, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the veil the temple of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen to sleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now the centurion and those who were with him keeping guard over Jesus When they saw the earthquake and the things that were happening became very frightened and said, truly this was the Son of God. When I survey the wondrous cross of glory died my richest gain I count but loss and poor content on all my pride forbid should boast save in the death of Christ my God all the vain things that charm me most I sacrifice them to his blood 
Now, after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. And his appearance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. The guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified. He is not here, for he has risen. Just as he said, come, see the place where he was lying. Go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. And they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to report to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and greeted them, and they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and take word to my brethren to leave for Galilee, and there we shall see him. See me. Let's stand and sing. Christ the Lord is risen today, hallelujah. Sons of men and angels say, hallelujah. Raise your joys and triumphs high, hallelujah. Sing ye hymns and earth reply, hallelujah. Lives again our glorious King, Alleluia. Where, O oh, death, is now thy sting, Alleluia. Dying once, he all does say, Alleluia. Where thy victory, O grave, Alleluia. Love's redeeming work is done, Alleluia. Fought the fight, the battle won, Alleluia. Death in vain forbids him rise, Alleluia. Christ has opened paradise, Alleluia. Soar we now where Christ has led, Alleluia. Following our 
exalted head. Alleluia. Made like him, like him we rise. Alleluia. Ours the cross, the grave, the skies. Alleluia. Amen. Please be seated. The first account I composed, Theophilus, about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up into heaven, after he had by the Holy Spirit given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen. To these he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. Gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they were asking him, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom of Israel to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but... You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, even to the remotest parts of the earth. And after he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky while he was going, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them. They also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. When uh, when the angels appeared to the lowly shepherds at Jesus' birth, they proclaimed, Behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be for all people. As we've walked through uh, a snapshot of the life of Christ, uh, his birth and um, his ministry, his death and resurrection and ascension, this is good news. This is good news for you today. If you are hearing my voice right now, this is good news for you. As John 3, 16 And 17 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. This is good news of great joy. It's not advice. It's not an argument. It's not a set of instructions on how to get to God. It is news. News of God seeing the mess we made of the perfect world that uh, he had created. The sin of Adam and Eve put us at enmity with God, with nature, and with each other. We were as bad off as we could possibly be. We may not be as bad as we could possibly be, but we're as bad off as we could possibly be. But instead of looking down on us, he came down. He came down and entered our race, our space, our time. Jesus lived the perfect life that we couldn't because we were born sinners under Adam's curse. Jesus died and paid the ultimate and perfect price for our rebellion to reconcile us to God, to each other, to all of creation. And Jesus' resurrection was God's stamp of approval on the death of Christ as payment in full. You don't have to wonder if you're welcome because Christ is risen from the dead. This is good news. <clears throat> this is good news because the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus means that one day everything sad is going to come untrue. All the pain 
all the suffering, all the loss in this life will only serve to increase the glory and joy in eternity if you are in Christ. If you place your faith and hope in his atoning death on your behalf, if you have been declared righteous by God's grace through faith, then this is good news for you. If you are in Christ, the worst thing that could ever happen happen to you has already happened. The worst thing that could ever happen to you in your life has already happened. It's in your past. And it's not unemployment. It's not a stock market crash. It's not cancer. It's not the loss of a loved one. The worst thing that could ever happen to you is standing before a holy God and answering for your sin. Because if you are in Christ, this exchange has already happened. Christ answered to God for your sin and paid the debt with his own life. There is a warning here, though, that if you are not found in Christ because of unbelief, the, the worst is not behind. The worst is ahead. Christ is coming back. The first time was not to judge but to save, but the next time it is to judge the living and the dead. Um, John 3.18, most people don't make signs for this at football games. Um, it says, he who believes in him is, is not judged, but he who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He is coming to judge the righteous by faith to eternal joy and reward, the unrighteous by unbelief to eternal punishment and regret. Be found in Christ. The time is short, which means the time is now. Be found in Christ. Call upon the name of Jesus as your Savior and your Lord. Be found in Christ. Cease your striving to save yourself by trying to put up a good record when you have been given a perfect record in Christ. Be found in Christ. That is that's what I want to leave you with today, to implore you today. Don't let this Christmas go by. Be found in Christ.